Lennar, the second largest home builder in America, is dramatically slashing the price on their homes in 2024. With the average selling price on Lennar homes down 16% from peak across America and as much as 23% from peak in markets like Texas. And in some cases, Lennar is now selling homes at an even cheaper price than they did before the pandemic, indicating a huge correction in the market and one that you need to be tracking if you're a home buyer or investor. As you can see folks, Lennar is the second largest home builder in America by volume. They produce about 60 to 70,000 new homes a year. They're second to DR Horton in total production, and they're just behind DR Horton on revenue. So what Lennar does is a huge indication of what's going on in the market more broadly, the market which is seeing more and more dramatic price reductions this spring. For instance, take a look at this house in San Antonio. It's a Lennar build, four bed, three bath. It was built in 2022. It's on the market now for $204,000, or only $100 per square foot. You can see that this house is an okay looking home. There's some weird paint situations going on in some of the bedrooms, but it's a fairly standard brand new build. Now you can see if we go back to the listing history, Lennar had this house listed for 267000 in March 2022, near the peak of the bubble. 267000 They actually ended up selling it to a new owner who has since defaulted on their mortgage and been foreclosed on with the house now available for 204000 A 24 percent reduction from the original Lennar list price. And so you have to wonder if you are a buyer and investor kind of sitting on the sidelines, should you be looking at buying a home from Lennar? Because the prices, whether it's sold from Lennar directly or a resale from a recent buyer, is certainly going down and going down fast. The question you need to ask yourself is, are you comfortable buying in a new home building development where a builder like Lennar is just going to throw up 10 more new homes next to your house and they might lower the price by even more. Moreover, in these home building sites, we're also starting to see some financial distress take over. This was the other thing that was announced in Lennar's most recent earnings call that really caught my attention. Their CEO came out and said very point blank that they are seeing more signs of financial distress among the people who buy Lennar Homes. Take a look at this quote, everyone. It's from Stuart Miller, Lennar's CEO, and in their most recent earnings call, take a look at what he said. With higher interest rates, affordability continues to be tested as higher monthly payments make qualifying for a loan increasingly difficult. He says that inflationary pressures have driven traditional cost of living expenses higher over the last two years, which has made savings for a down payment increasingly difficult. But here's the big point, everyone. Higher prices have also started to lead to increased personal and credit card debt as families stretch to pay their bills. We've started to see early evidence of debt delinquencies showing up and derailing some of our mortgage applications. So folks, um, the CEO of Lennar is coming out and saying basically what I've been telling you guys the last uh, year or so, that the situation in the economy is not so sustainable that American households are really feeling burdened and now that's finally showing up actually in uh, the mortgage applications to Lennar when someone buys a house from Lennar because Lennar actually uh, finances a high degree of the mortgages that go to buy their home. So they see in real time the data, the credit report data, um, the information on incomes and debts and all that kind of stuff for their buyers and that data got a lot worse in the most recent quarter. Stuart Miller, their CEO, goes on to reiterate, we are definitely seeing a little more credit card debt and personal debt from the customer showing up in their applications. We have seen delinquencies in some of that debt. With the head of Lennar's mortgage arm, Bruce Gross, going on to say that, in particular, we are seeing a higher percentage relating to debt to income. So there's more debt to pay off, and that's something new that we noticed this quarter. All right, everyone, so not only are they seeing more debt, more delinquencies, they're seeing higher debt to income ratios on the mortgage applications, which suggests that the debt burden for families in America and home buyers in America is growing faster than the incomes. And again, folks, this is something I've been warning you guys about for the last year. Those charts on debt to income ratio from Fannie Mae that I've been showing you, now they're showing up for America's second biggest home builder. And it's relevant enough for their executive management team to comment on it on their earnings call. 
which is my other takeaway from this. Lennar probably suspects that this is going to be something that's a drag on their operations in the future, whether it's through lower sales and or more mortgage delinquencies in their communities, uh, push down prices in their communities. I suspect something is brewing under the surface here that we'll need to track in future quarters. And you can see Lennar, they're already preparing for this shakeout. Uh, like on this house here in Henderson, Nevada, this is a new build in Henderson, Nevada from Lennar. You can see it's actually a pretty nice house, three bed, three bath. Now it's 699,000, 699,000 everyone. However, you could see that that's a fairly substantial $50,000 price reduction in about a month from when it was originally listed for $700,000. 50,000. And so this house here in uh, Henderson, Nevada, which is just to the southeast of Las Vegas, yes, it's still expensive, but they're cutting the price and they're also offering pretty crazy deals on mortgage rates and mortgage buy downs. And so this is the other thing, right? Lennar and other home builders, they've cut the price by quite a bit, as much as 16% on a national basis from peak. However, those price cuts don't include the value of the mortgage rate buy-downs that these builders are giving home buyers right now. I mean, this is the other side to this equation for the builders, which is kind of insane, is how aggressively the builders have lowered the mortgage rates. So right now, if you were to buy a house in America, like a traditional house, an existing home with a traditional mortgage, your mortgage rate, according to Mortgage News Daily, would be around 7.5%. 1%, 7.1% mortgage rate. You can see obviously the mortgage rates went up substantially since 2021, and they've stayed in this 7% range now for about a year and a half. However, if you're gonna buy a house from one of these builders, you're gonna likely get a mortgage rate less than that and potentially substantially less than that. Check this out, everyone. I just Googled mortgage rate buy down and they took me to a, a program that they have here in the greater Nashville area where you can get what's called a 321 mortgage rate buy down that buys down your mortgage rate to get this folks 1.99% in year 1, 2.99% in year 2, 3.99% in year 3, and then 4.99% for the balance of the loan term, the uh, entire 30 year mortgage. When the prevailing 30 year fixed mortgage rate is 7%. I mean, that's crazy folks, that's a huge savings. The value of that mortgage rate buy down, you know, Lennar is having to probably pay 30, 40, maybe even 50 grand for that mortgage rate buy down, depending on how expensive the house is. Now, the question is, are these mortgage rate buy downs a good idea? And are they actually gonna be beneficial for people in the long run. Well, you know, if you can buy a house and get your mortgage rate for 5% for the entire term, and Lennar is gonna pay to do that, or some other home builder is gonna pay to do that, I mean, why wouldn't you, right? You're getting a 2% reduction and the builder's paying for it. That's pretty nice. However, I'm more skeptical of these upfront mortgage rate buy downs where they advertise like 2% rate in year one. 3% rate in year two. Those type of short-term mortgage rate buy-downs look a lot like kind of the escalating teaser rate mortgages we saw in the mid 2000s, where the builders lured in home buyers with the low upfront payments, only to see those payments spike over the next two or three years. And then when the payments spiked, the buyers all of a sudden either didn't have the money to pay or didn't want to pay. So I would not be surprised if we do see quite a few mortgage defaults and foreclosures in many of these home building communities with some of these upfront buy downs that these builders are offering in combination with the fact that these builders are already saying that the uh, quality of the credit applications is already in decline. But of course, folks, there's huge regional variation in terms of where builders are cutting the price and where values have gone down the most. And the one thing that stuck out most to me about this Lennar earnings report and how much they're selling the homes for is how much of a downturn Texas's housing market is in right now. Because, you know, we talked about before, on a national basis, uh, Lennar has cut the price from 491,000 to 413,000 for the selling price on their deliveries. Now, some of that reduction might be related to smaller homes being delivered. We don't really know how much of that is driven by the home size, but anyway, you slice it, the average selling price for Lennar nationally in the first quarter of 2024 is the same as it was in the second quarter of 2021 and is pretty close to what it was before the pandemic. So anyway you slice it, these prices have gone down a lot nationally, but especially in Texas, where the average selling price from Lennar in the first quarter of 2024 was 251,000 for the average home in Texas. Now I almost had to like do a double take 
and just fact check myself on this. Is that actually right, 251,000 in Texas? Well, if you go to their most recent earnings report and scroll down, you can see it is among their deliveries. First quarter of 2024, average sales price in Texas of 251,000, which is down significantly year over year. And it's now down to the lowest level that we have seen going back at least to 2019. I pulled this data every quarter going back to 2019. This is now the lowest average selling price that we've seen in Texas from Lennar. And we can see more broadly, Texas is down 24%, the nation's down 16%, West Coast is down 14%, Central US is down 12%, and the East Coast is down 8%. And so this is the breakout and how much the selling prices for Lennar have declined by region. Obviously, Texas is taking it on the chin. Why is Texas taking it on the chin? Well, I mean, this is a housing market where the inventory has absolutely exploded. There is no longer a housing shortage in Texas. There is no longer a pandemic boom in Texas. We are now seeing the reverse of that occurring with there being 85,000 homes for sale across the state of Texas. Now you could see that this 85,000 homes for sale is almost triple the levels of two years ago. So I mean, the inventory compared to two years ago has just exploded and is now basically at the pre-pandemic level of inventory. And so when uh, the inventory gets back to pre-pandemic levels, that tends to be a signal that prices are heading down in that housing market. This is particularly true, everyone, if we look uh, in certain more like suburban and rural location where these builders are most active. So if we go here on Reventure app and look at a data point called housing unit growth rate, you could see the zip codes where the number of housing units has grown the most, where the builders are most active. And you could see it's the outer ring of a metro like Houston, these areas in red with the most home building. And what do you see? The areas with the most home building in Houston are the ones where prices have dropped. Uh, where prices have actually started going down while the interior areas of Houston with less home building have continued to see appreciation. And so these builders are definitely causing prices to go down in many cities and zip codes. And you gotta be very careful if you're a home buyer or a home seller or an investor in these areas because the builders, they're showing that they're really just interested in moving inventory, uh, doing sales volume. And actually Lennar and other builders, they've been pretty successful in improving their sales through these price cuts and mortgage rate buy downs. With Lennar's new orders for the quarter in 2024, up about 25% year over year. They went from 14,200 orders in the beginning of 2023 to 18,200 orders in the beginning of 2024. So the builders are able to drive more sales volume due to the fact that they've increased the price and then they're doing these crazy mortgage rate buy downs, which has allowed them to continue to increase revenue and to keep their stock prices high. Now there was one last very interesting comment that the CEO of Lennar made in their earnings report that I need to share with you guys because it's um, something that actually is showing that there's some deflationary pressure going on in the economy and housing market right now. And I know that sounds crazy because all everyone is still talking about is inflation. We're still seeing inflation across the economy more broadly. However, these builders are experiencing deflation, which is one reason why they're able to offer cheaper homes. Because according to John Jaff, the co-CEO of Lennar, they've experienced, get this folks, a 30% decrease and what's called their cycle time to deliver homes down to 154 days on average. So Lennar is now delivering houses in about five months, which is a 30% improvement from where it was a year ago. So they're building and delivering houses much faster, which is something that's reducing their overhead and their costs. In addition, their construction costs are down 2% quarter over quarter, and year over year, they're down 11%. So we have much faster time to deliver the homes and lower construction costs, which is lowering their overhead and thus allowing them to offer these price reductions without nuking their profitability. Now, one has to wonder, how are they achieving these reductions in cost? Is it all through kind of lower lumber prices and lower materials costs? Or are they finding ways to become more efficient with their home building? Or are they, dare I say, cutting corners on the home building? I don't know the answers to that question. However, I do know that there's been many complaints over the last several years from buyers of brand new homes who say that the construction quality has not been up to par. For instance, on Trustpilot, Lennar has 87 reviews 
and a 1.8 out of 5 rating. 83% of the reviews have been one star, with a lot of people saying that you know they've been in the house only two years and they've had more things go wrong than they can care to count. Closet shelf has fallen completely out of the wall. Piece of flooring tore. Siding at the top of the house came undone. This buyer said that they've paid too much for a house to have had this many problems and they've only been there 16 months. And there's quite a few other uh, reviews that are negative here, a couple positive ones as well. And you know, you have to be careful with online reviews because often they tend to tilt to the negative. However, you probably should be careful if you're buying a brand new home and find a good home inspector to inspect that home before you officially sign on the dotted line and move in and pay all that money. Um, a lot of people buy a new home, they don't think they need an inspector because it's brand new. However, it's probably a good idea to get a home inspector on the brand new home and have them go through it with a fine tooth comb. Lastly, everyone, I would encourage you to definitely do some research about how much home building is occurring in your city, state, and zip code because the more building that's occurring in your area, uh, the greater the risk of price declines, all of the things the same, particularly if you're looking at buying in a zip code with a high housing unit growth rate. Make sure to take a look at that data point on Reventure app, www.reventure.app. This is a premium data point. It's gonna help you understand uh, which markets, which neighborhoods have the most building. Interestingly, again, here in Houston, you know, we have zip codes like in Bel Air, near Rice University, where you know, if the housing units are contracting, there's more and more of a shortage, right? Whereas if we go out to some zip codes here, like around Katy, Texas, we can see the number of housing units has increased 85% over the last five years, which has led to a massive spike in inventory of homes for sale, which is now putting downward pressure on prices. So understanding these data points on inventory and housing unit growth rate is very important for you guys to make a more educated decision. So head to www.reventure.app right now and sign up for that premium monthly pass membership for $39 a month. You can cancel it at any time.